So hey everyone, Joseph Borghese here from rulesforsuccess.com. I'm here with my good buddy, John Louis. John Louis and I go back about 15, maybe seven, 16, 17 years, and we've done a lot of growth work together. Wow. And uh, super inspired. So this is a podcast we do um, often, and um, it's, it's about taking thought leaders, authorities, coaches, engaging them, and hearing their rules for success. So John, so John Louis, Kokio is a is an extraordinary leader. He's an, he's an entrepreneur. He's a, a coach. He's he and I have gone through this uh, unique journey over the years. Um, we've done a lot of growth work over the years. We've been in men's groups in a men's group over the years as well, also a leadership group. And uh, he's been an extraordinary friend and a leader for me as well. Part of the reason why I'm even married to my wife is a uh, a factor of John Louis and his coaching he gave to me some eight years ago. And it was really extraordinary feedback. I acknowledge him often when I see him in one of our audiences. Uh, as many of you know, I also lead the New York Power Team. We're a largest peak performance uh, meetup community in New York, made for 26 years. Uh, Rules for Success is part of our Success Circles program. It's a peer coaching community uh, for entrepreneurs, coaches. And um, I'm just excited. I'm really excited to really talk to you, talk to you about your new coaching program. How are you, buddy? I'm really great. Thanks, Joseph. Awesome. Thanks, thanks for having me on. It's, 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 and that was an awesome intro. And I am really uh, blessed to have you in my life as well as a friend and someone who I've, who's also contributed to me in so many ways over the years. So thank you as well. My pleasure. My pleasure. And I'm really reminded the whole idea of a mastermind connecting with great people is the opportunity for each of us leveling each other up continually, really through how we see each other, through uh, feedback, through uh, accountability, just through the, the nature of the games you play in life. And as we, as we keep growing, we invite others to grow too as well also, whether they be in our families, our friendships, and much more. So a little bit more background on John that we can go through his bio here a little bit for our audience. And of course, you can read about this on our site and also John, John Louis' website too, growingbeyondbelief.com. So John Louis is the creator and facilitator of the Growing Beyond Belief program for entrepreneurs and leaders. We're being called to no longer tolerate or, or work the personal life that is out of alignment with their soul's mission, who they are truly here to be and what they are truly here to do as lifetime. Growing Beyond Belief is a program that lays out the process that slowly unfolded for John Louis over 25 years. For over 25 years, it's process that he was able to successfully put to the test while co-running and growing his family's business in Haiti. And I was there in, in a group with, with uh, John Louis during this time, we were in a men's group for some time as he was going through some of this. Um, through the devastating earthquake back in 2010 and the unprecedented social and political upheaval in the years that followed. In the Growing Beyond Belief program, John Louis assists his participants in, in quickly breaking out of patterns of stuckness and in moving toward creating new levels of freedom, productivity, and meaningful results in their business and their, in their lives. Um, participants come away with a powerful process for reliably realizing the outcomes that they most want again and again, irrespective of the internal or external blocks that they may be bumping up against. So that's John Louis' mission. That's his, that's his, that's his commitment with his coaching program. And uh, he's evolved quite a bit over the years, as have I over the years. And I really, really, I'd love to hear um, your journey, kind of like what, what's led you to do this? So I, I know you've, you've gone through major career transitions over the years. Uh, you, you operate, when your, your dad passed away, your dad was one of the leaders, uh, founders, uh, uh, heading up uh, this aviation company in Haiti. Mm. And then and something happened. He passed away. I, and I recognize my, my dad passed away too around the same time, I believe. And you went out there and you, you basically took on much of his role. So that, that was one career shift. And you did an excellent job with that, which we talked about a little bit a while ago in, in your bio. But give the audience a little bit more meat. So... What's been your career journey like bringing you to where you are now doing coaching? Yeah, wow. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, where I would probably start is I started uh, just being called into learning about personal growth and development at the age of 17. Mm -hmm. You know, it started like many people with uh, whether it be Tony Robbins or Napoleon Hill or, you know, going to the uh, the bookstore as soon as I could get my driver's license and like parking myself in front of the the psychology and self-help section of, of, the, of the of the of bookstores and just you know absorbing as much as I could it was just something that I was always interested in and uh, over that period of time 
I had gone into many of the traditional routes of uh, that we, you know, are grown into and are, are expected to follow, be it you know, college, and then you get a job, and, and then you work for someone, you develop a skill. And throughout that time, I, I was always still searching, searching for something. And I felt as if there was something calling me. I felt as if there was some sort of direction or guidance that I was getting, but it wasn't really clear for me. Um, and so, you know, I had gone from different types of positions. I was an executive recruiter at one point. At another point, I worked, you know, here in the city, uh, working at an internet company. And in 2007, my father, who uh, had, as you mentioned, built a business. He was an immigrant here to the United States uh, from Haiti. Uh, my parents met uh, in actually Astoria, Queens, where really? they live um, as, as teenagers and uh, fell in love. My mother was an was a immigrant from France. And uh, we were born here, and but they they split up uh, by when I was 16, and so my father went to live in Florida, and uh, and then he pursued his own his own business interests, and he was a remarkable remarkable man in what he was able to achieve from where he started, um, my hero in many ways. But I always wanted to do things my own way. I always wanted to 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 make my own mark and not necessarily lean on 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 him and so on and so forth. So I always kind of resisted, um, you know, being part of his, his business and things like that. I wanted to just make my own way. But in 2007, uh, when I was in my early 30s, uh, my father gave me a call in September and was something in his voice that had me really listen a bit, a bit more. And uh, my girlfriend at the time, who's now my wife, Anna, she, uh, she actually recommended, she said, listen, you really should listen a bit more because he was, he was and accept his proposal because he was asking me to really come down and, be, and learn the business. And so I took her advice um, and I listened to my gut and I said, you know what, I'm going to go. So I packed everything up, quit my job, moved down to Florida. And about a month in, I discovered that he was ill and he wasn't really, he was a very proud man and he wasn't really sharing that with many people. And little by little over the period of a year and a half, um, rather than essentially learn the business, I, I, as his condition worsened, I of course, you know, became a bit more of his caretaker. Um, until his passing in 2009. And I, could, I can say that that year and a half was the most amazing, one of the most special times of my life because I got to, I got to experience and learn about my father in ways that I never did before as an adult, not just as a child, but to, to really learn who he was as an adult. But what happened in 2009 was now I was thrust into this business. That was in a foreign country, which I really had very little experience with. I had gone to Haiti when I was five, but I didn't really return until I was 25. And, um, and I really didn't speak the language very, very well. A couple words here and there, mediocre French, uh, you know, for the most part. Um, and all of a sudden, I had 110 you know, employees in this aviation management company uh, in, in an in a, uh, industry that I knew very little about. Um, who were looking at me knowing that they knew more about my business than I knew about my business. Mm. And so, and, so um, and of course, I was fortunate enough to have a, a partner uh, that I, that also was my father's partner that really w worked, we worked very well with. And, um, but we experienced crisis very early on. Um, yes. Within three months, we had a, uh, a, um, a hostile, attempted hostile takeover of the company. A year later, there was the 2010 earthquake. Uh, in which you know two, over 200,000 people perished in 35 seconds, and we were on the ground for that to happen. Um, after that, there was this political and social upheaval, in addition to the cholera epidemic that broke out. Haiti had never had that happen. And so it was one thing after another um, that where I had to kind of level up in my skill set and draw on things that um, I had learned from when I started at 17. Um, luckily, my partner, he was very strong, obviously, with his experience and his capacities in the business itself. And I was able to lean on that and learn from him and contribute what it is that I had developed in myself. Um, but uh, when we made that, after seven and a half years later, we were able to, through all of that, grow the business um, under all those conditions, um, expand to a second uh, station in the north coast of Haiti called Cape Haitian, a beautiful area. And... Um, and basically, you know, grow the business and, and diversify our client portfolio. And it was at, at about seven and a half years in that um, I, was, I was ready to kind of make that transition and come back to New York. There was something that was, was telling me that, you know what, this, this, this chapter of my life is complete. You know, my job 
my, how I felt it was, uh, my perspective is to leave people better off for my having been there than worse off for my having been there. That was so, always my objective. And Johnny, I think I accomplished that. So Johnny, in, in, that, that in that chapter, though, that, that seven year chapter and such you mentioned just now, yeah. I, I'm sure our audience would like to know, and particularly how it relates to the current, current it's a COVID landscape we are in currently. Um, I, I, it's my hallucination. There was a lot of perturbation, a lot of pressure on you, particularly during these times. You mentioned the, the uh, hostile tur- takeover, and, uh, and 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 you, you and the business partner as well, also. And uh, you were on the ground. You mentioned during that Haiti earthquake, that killed tens of thousands of people, hundreds, hundreds, hundreds of. Them. Got it. Yeah, even bigger, right? Yeah. So, so are there any lessons that you can you took from that experience, such that someone out now and and the, and the things people deal with these days, right, with COVID, not too bad. It's, I mean, it's bad, but comparatively to the, the intensity of what you went through out there, from one thing to another thing to cholera and more, um, it's not it, 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 it's 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 not minimizing what's going on right now, but it's still there. There was a greater level of pressure as you went through back then such that I imagine that you, you, there are things you learned that you're bringing forth in your coaching and what you do now as a leader and your brand now, God Grown Beyond Belief. What are some key takeaways or lessons that you, 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 you've taken from that experience, from seeing people um, um, in a, 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 like pivot in, right, in, in, in many ways and uh, adapt and, 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 uh, and grow that perhaps will serve someone watching this right now? Yeah, great question. The first thing that comes to mind is that that experience was like a crash course in courage. And not, not on my half, on behalf of the people that I worked with and that, uh, that live in Haiti on the day to day. I saw a, a, a demonstration of resiliency and, survi- and a survival instinct that gave me nothing but respect for the people that I had the privilege of working with and, 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 and actually the, the people of Haiti themselves. And uh, the other side of that is to answer your question is more precisely is I would, I would call that the gift of a crisis. You know, no one ever wants to go into a crisis, uh, but, but you know, you know, you know, you wake up in the day and you're like, you know what, I think I'm just gonna, I'm gonna crisis a crisis today. In my life. <laughs> you know, no, one, you know, no one ever starts the day that way. Not at all. Um, certainly I didn't start that day, you know, that early day in January, you know, January 12th, um, 2010. Um, but, when you go through a crisis, there's something that you get to be on the other side of it that you would have never become were it not for the crisis to begin with. And that is very much what I saw and I experienced myself, not just once, but multiple times. It was as if I was being, I was being called to be greater. It was as if something was saying, Jean-Louis, okay, here's your skill set. Um, oh, and by the way, we're gonna present this to you, this, this, this crisis. Um, and by the way, yeah, nothing that you know to do and that you've learned up to this point, yeah, all of that, yeah, none of that's going to work. You're going to have to become someone and draw from something that you, that, that by going through that process will make you not only, you know, better, but will also help you fulfill what I call eventually one soul's mission. What someone is here to be, who someone is here to be, and what someone is here to do in this lifetime. It's, a, I believe, a calling to that if we allow ourselves to see it from that perspective. And so for me, when I made that transition, I had gone through this, this development on the ground um, over there in, in a way that I could never have gotten through reading a book, but right. through the experience of it. When I came back in New York, I was kind of like, okay, now what? Mm-hmm. But the universe wasn't done with me. It wanted another crisis. It needed me to experience another crisis. And so for a period of about two and a half years, I had gone back to an old uh, type of work that I was doing, we're doing SEO work for businesses, but it wasn't resonating. Yeah. Nothing was working. Nothing was being put together. Everything I was doing, again, wasn't working. I was getting frustrated. You know what happened? I started blaming other people. Yeah. I started blaming my wife. I started faulting, you know, other people in my friends and my family, everyone but me. And then at some point in August of 2019, I hit uh, what, what I think Tony Robbins, right? So to give Tony a, a shout out, he calls the point of threshold mm-hmm. where 
there comes a point where we get to a place where we say, not another minute, not another second. And I saw that if I kept going the way that I was going in my relationships and pointing the fingers out there, and you know, this is why I'm, I'm, I made these bad decisions, this is why the investment didn't work, this is why we're running out of money and going into debt and so on and so forth, that for me personally, in order to keep things afloat and nothing's working, if I keep going and, and doing this, I'm probably gonna lose the thing that matters the most to me, which is my marriage. Right, right. And when, and the thing, the straw that really broke the camel's back, Joseph, is when I looked a little further and I could see my daughter looking up to me, who's young and saying, daddy, who should I live with, mommy or daddy? And in wow. that moment, that was it, I was done. As a child, as a, as a child who was in a divorced family myself, I, that was my point of threshold. And it was in that moment that I was all of a sudden willing, and this is the gift in the other side of the crisis, because we grow by inspiration and desperation. Yes, we do. And I had desperation and I was like, you know what? I'm done, We're, okay, I'm open. And, and it was as if there's a, if there's a door on the back of the, of the heart where the soul is knocking and saying, knock, it's knocking, it's knocking, it's knocking. Mm -hmm. And all that time I was like, la, 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 I can't hear you. <laughs> you <know? laughs> it's not the right time, you know? It's I can't make money doing that, no. People are gonna make fun of me, no, I'm not gonna do it. You know, it's like, no, I don't, don't, I don't want to listen to knock. What knock? Knock, knock, knock. I don't hear a knock, right? Mm -hmm. For like 20, 30 years. But all of a sudden it was like, okay, out of the crisis, I was willing. I was open and willing to do and, and consider things that I had never been open and willing to do and consider. And it's as if I, I opened the door and the soul said, hey, here's your bag. Take it. Here's a train. You're supposed to be on your journey. The train's about to leave the station. Don't miss your train. Yeah. And this is something that exists for every single, I believe, mm. for every single one of us, is that there is a calling that we are here to answer. And it's up to us to be open and willing to be able to say, you know what, to let go of the known and to go into the unknown and to answer that knock and to follow what I call the soul's journey, who we're here to be, to fulfill that mission. If it's like a mountain, you know, like the summit, and we're at the bottom of the mountain and we have our backpack on, and we're like, we're, we're, we're climbing up that thing. But there's, yeah. there's an articulation of that soul's mission. You know, my soul's mission, what I discovered and what, how it's articulated and identified is that mm. I'm a stand for the courage and greatness of humanity. Mm. And what that looks like for me, mm. and this is something I made up, because I asked myself a question, Joseph, in August that I never asked mm. myself before. When I opened that door, I said, what could I create mm. that will be worthy of my life? Mm. I had never asked myself, I said, okay, because mm -hmm. I had seen in the YouTube video with Tony, you have to go back with Tony, but with Tony, right? Mm -hmm. And Tony goes, he says, um, people often overestimate what they can do in a year, but underestimate what they can do or 10 and 20. And I was and inspired by that because I said, okay, I'm 45 at the time. I'm 45. Mm -hmm. I can't go back. I've done what I've done and this is where it is, but I can see myself 20 years from now. I could feasibly think that I have, you know, no one knows for sure, but I can make it to 65, yeah. right? And if that's the case, what could I create that's worthy of my life that I can invest 10 or 20 years into? And that's that question. And, and the fact that I opened the door and was willing to follow that calling and, and what emerged after that, the body of work, that led to me being, being willing to, 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 to listen to the answer. And the answer that came back when I said, what could I create? The first thing came to me was 20 million. 20 million, what does that mean? It wasn't dollars. What came to me further was 20 million people. And what emerged later is not only you can create, you're here, what if you could create a body of work that could impact the lives in a profound and lasting way of 20 million people by the time, within 15 years? Yeah. And they said, oh. Yeah. And so I go, and so I go to my community. I start sharing it. Right. Right. I start talking to people. I go to like these events that I'm at and I, some people I don't know, there's a hundred yeah. people there, but I take up the mic and I'm like, and they're like, Hey, Jean-Louis, what are you, what are you creating? It's like, you know, growth and development events yeah. and trains. And they're, and they're like, what are you, what are you up to? And then what, what is it that you're out to create this year? And I'm like, well, let me tell you, I'm up to create a body of work. <laughs> it's an impact <laughs> lives of 20 million people. And then some people came up to me and later said, Jean-Louis, this uh, body of work thing, is that like art? Are you becoming an artist? Mm. Or is, you know, because people, I, I was like, I'm following, you know, guidance, you know, right. what, I, what I've come to call benevolent guidance and assistance, which right. is something we all have access to. But go yeah. ahead. No, it's great. It's really, 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 really extraordinary. I, I love that journey, that, that, that new chapter of your life you're kind of describing now as well, based on what you learned from previously as well, also, right? And uh, it, it's exceptional. I mean, especially, particularly, um, 
what I also hear what you're saying is you're, you're inspired, right? And you want to create an impact in the world. And it's 20 years and you will live until you're 65, obviously, and beyond, yeah. right? And, uh, and, and what I'm present to is that people are going through a bit of a crisis now, right, currently in, in these times. And there, there are some key lessons and things you've, you've brought forward and you bring into your coaching now, mm-hmm. particularly around uh, being heart-centered, kind of connecting the heart and, and, and the heart and the, and the head, right? Making, getting very resourceful. Um, for most of us also, I think we were hitting a threshold currently, or we have at some point and some parts of the world are opening up currently. And uh, they're talking about a second wave or we might be in the first wave still people are talking about as well also. Um, you talk about courage. So how do, how do people like ta- access that level of cu- courage to be, um, to, to really make things happen? Like, how do they access that? How would they access that? Of course, you know, working with you and, 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 and your program, Growing Beyond Belief is one access, but how inter- internally, like how could they get into that level of resourcefulness for themselves to create a breakthrough in this current climate right now? Yeah. Great question. And, you know, to, to answer that question, one would have to, 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 I think, to understand it, it's like we can, we can learn how to do something a, couple, a number of different ways there's there's like one on one extreme we can for example map it if we're mapping a territory on what it is to, to to have courage and develop courage under these circumstances to learn about that and you map the territory you learn about it it's like it's like you're flying over the territory and you're looking out the window and thirty thousand feet and you're like you have a clipboard in your hand you're like okay here's the rivers here's the streams there's the mountains I'm gonna plot everything out ten minutes okay I'm done I mapped it it's right here I know something I know this I mapped the territory yes. there's another way and the other way is to get on the ground yes. and go in your hands and knees on a crab crawl going in and out of ditches and yes. you know having mud splatter on your face and and really getting intimately understood understanding of the territory that, that take, doesn't take, take 10 minutes, that takes 20, 30 years sometimes. Yes. But, but at some point, you get enough of the understanding. And here's the understanding after my 25 years of being in the ground and, 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 and in the ditches like that. Yes. Is that the, when, you know, I think in the West, we operate a great deal from what I call the neck up. Yeah. You know, yeah. our rational mind, our ego. Mm-hmm. You, know, what, you know, what looks good? How can I look good? How can I avoid looking bad? Um, how can I, you know, be right or be justified or uh, have uh, some you know, get ahead in some way? Uh, right. What's right? What's wrong? So all of this is fine, but if too much of it, it, it skews us, our experience, yes. and what we have access to. I yes. think a human being is is optimal, is operates in an optimal way when they have their head and their heart connected. Hmm. The thing is, is we haven't been taught how to open this thing, right? How to connect with this thing. And so, but when we do, this is the realm of, of cooperation. This is the realm of kindness. This is the realm of courage. Yeah. This is the realm of, of, of clarity, of certainty, of, yes. uh, you know, of, of, who, of love. And so when we, when we can, and, and all it takes is practicing, opening it up, you know, the more we practice anything, the better we get. Yes. And so, but no one's been taught, we haven't as a, as a species, you know, reliably been, and maybe, I would say certainly as a as a as a Western culture, let's put it that way, because I don't know the history of of, of before time of before you know recorded history. Maybe this was available, and I'm sure it was. Yes. But in terms of Western culture in 2020, I think a lot of people today are not connected or understand how to how to make that connection in, in right. a way that's practical. Right. And I think the first step is to is to be willing to to kind of touch in with here, with the yeah. touch base with that soul's calling. And to, and to close your eyes and ask yourself a question. This is like one of the questions I ask my, my own clients, and we do this every day. Who am I being called as I, as I close my eyes and hold, hold my hands to my heart mm. and take mm. a deep breath mm. and, and listen to my soul's calling? Yeah. Who am I being called to be today that matters to me? Yes. Now you capture that. Yes. Right? Yeah. Next question. As I, as I still listen to my soul's calling, mm. what am I being called to create in the near future? That is an expression, an observable expression of my soul's mission. Mm. Now you listen again, you listen, but you do, do it's like, it's like Kaizen, you know, that Japanese philosophy, yes. where you're just making small little changes. You just ask yes. yourself different questions. Now questions like, again, Tony says, determine focus, ask yes. yourself a better quality question. You have a better quality answer. Yes. And so what it does is it, it develops a capacity. Yeah. A capacity is like, is, is, is like, you know, 
is, is something that we, you just, you're a container where, you know, the more questions you ask, the more it gets full. Yes. And now you have a path, you can, you can walk over that container. If you, it's like a gap, if you're on one side of the cliff and the other side of the cliff is clarity, yes. and you don't have the courage to move back onto the other side, to, to, to make that jump. You need to have something, a bridge that connects you with that other side. Now on that other side is what I call benevolent guidance and assistance. Yes. And, and what's benevolent guidance and assistance? It's basically something we're all built in. It's built in. It's a built-in guidance system. It's like when an aircraft takes off from JFK and, yep. and te- sets off across country for LAX. It's off course most of the time. Yes, it is. So what the pilots do is they activate the guidance system. Right. And that guidance system allows them to land on in LAX on time and on the dime almost every time. Right. But what we do is we try to have courage to answer your question. We try to move forward into the unknown. But it's as if we're like taking off and, and we're those pilots and we're trying to look out, look out the window and plot the course by, you know, uh, without using the activating system, but the, the, the guidance system that's designed that the aircraft comes with. And because we don't know how to use it. Yes. And right. how, how reliable would those flights be if the pilots were, were, were limited to those resources? Well, in human beings, we have access to our own internal guidance system. And it's yeah. what I call the soul's call, the soul's calling and the soul's mission and benevolent guidance and assistance. And when you practice asking yourself again and again each day, it's as if you're opening those capacities, you're filling those, those columns in between the cliff with enough actions, Kaizen, small little actions, until yes. you have elevated capacity, capacity to ask for it, the mm. capacity to notice it, the capacity to uh, capture it, and finally the capacity to follow it. When you have those four things that you've elevated, now you have a bridge that you can cross over to the other side of the cliff and receive benevolent guidance and assistance on demand when you need it. I love it. For the rest of yeah. your life. And that it. is what gives you courage. Yeah. And you've developed those capacities because now you can let go of the known because now you have something. You know, what people that work with me, one of the things they get, they get almost mm. always right away is they, they say, Jean Louis, I don't feel like I'm alone anymore. Gotcha. I feel like I am clear that people are, it's something supporting and guiding me. I don't know what it is. If you say, you know, Jean-Louis, explain what this is. I do not know. I can't tell you what it is. I'm not saying that any of this is <laughs> the truth. It's simply a frame out of yep. many different frames in like a museum that allows me that I've been able to been through my own going through the trenches, you know, yes. for 25 years, what's emerged from me out of my own crisis and what I've used myself to now pass on to other people. And it is my soul's mission yeah. to do it. It's wonderful, my friend. I mean, I hear a number of things in there. And um, and you're, 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 I mean, allowing benevolent, benevolent guidance to come in, it's a matter of um, like having coherence, like the heart, body, mind connection, right? Opening it up and, and allowing, right? And having kind of vision for where you want to be. You mentioned 30,000 foot and on the trenches to getting out there to, to do the clearing work that's needed. And what I'd also say or hallucinate or right now is that people are, uh, I don't know if they're stuck in the trenches, but I'd say that there, there's, there is a bit of stuckness that's there given the distractions that the media puts out there and like what's in their mind, what they're making up and so forth continually. Like we all have our own perspectives, our own filters through life. And um, it, 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 I think it's, key, it's, it's clear to me that people have to kind of wake up to kind of remove those filters and kind of be open to that guidance inside. And it does take something. And it certainly takes a coach, like working with John Louis, for example, or, or some other wake-up call. And you've certainly had several wake-up calls over the years. I have was also, even in 2012, when I, we were in the men's group together, I had a number of wake-up calls myself that had me kind of shift and allow benevolent guidance to come in. And, and, I, I, and I, I call that for me, kind of allowing God or the universe to come in, kind of step in and, and interject, let's say. That's kind of how I frame it. And... Um, and really having the faith to really make the, the, the choices each day, take the, those key actions. You mentioned Kaizen just now also, 1% progress each day by, by, by staying on course, right? And I love the plane metaphor too as well, also the flying metaphor or the aviation metaphor from that world that you were in before because it does apply in life as well also, right? From point A to point Z or point A to point B, it's, it's, it's essential that we have some idea, some vision of where we want to be and, and then have the guidance internally to continue course correcting until we get there. It's really brilliant, my friend. That's great. So, 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 so we talked about virtues and values and courage, and uh, you gave some key distinctions on like, how people can do 
let me ask you a question. So with regard to getting a mentor like yourself, right? Like what are three things people should look, look out, look after, right? Do the three, three things to look for in a, in a coach or a mentor to help them kind of make those steps forward as they engage their guidance system internally? Yeah, it's a great, great question. And this, this answer uh, is rel rel relevant to both people who are looking for a coach and those that are uh, looking to become a coach. And, and I, and by the way, just to, I actually don't consider myself a coach. I'm more of a facilitator. Mm. So I help mm. people facilitate getting their, my job is to help them get the train out the station. Love so if, they're, if they answer their soul's calling and they're at the train, that's the beginning of their journey, right? It's like, okay, let me help you get those wheels moving. Because once you get that going, it's like you can just keep going for the rest of your life because you've built those capacities. Beautiful. But let me, let, me, um, let me answer that question. So what I've discovered, Okay, just my own discovery is that there are three there are three things that uh, people uh, could you know it's useful to be mindful of when you're either looking for a mentor or someone to work with uh, to help you to grow and develop in certain capacities and skill sets or whether you're looking to become one of those people and provide that service for other people and the first is uh, are you doing it yourself Hmm. Have you, are you practicing what you preach? Do you eat your own food, you know, and have you done so consistently throughout various different places and, and levels and, and times in your life? You know, have you applied what it is that you're, that you're, you know, sharing with people and, and, and providing with them in terms of insight yourself in the past and in the present? And that's something that's very observable. You can see very quickly whether someone is aligned with that in thought, feeling, and behavior. Just observe them. Absolutely. Um, the second, number, number two, is uh, do they have the talent, the facility, the ability to be able to transmit what they know to another human being such that that other human being uh, can produce some results in their life? Because there are a lot of people that know what to do, are very capable and competent in being able to do something, a particular, particular result, but they may not necessarily have the talent, ability, and skill to transmit what they know to another human being. And that takes time, that takes testing, that takes, you know, in my case, I do betas. You know, I have, my, I have my theories. I know they've worked for me to the extent that they, that they have in different areas of my life. Um, but now it's like, okay, can I transmit that? And so I, that's why I've done two betas and now I'm doing my July beta um, to work with people. So that's the, that's the second thing. You wanna, know, you wanna see, can they, can they teach it? And number three, is it their soul's mission to do so? Is it why they are here? Is it, is it, is it mm. what they're here to do and who they are here to be as a soul in this lifetime, not just as a, as a human being having a spiritual experience, but as Wayne Dyer used to say, as a spiritual being having a human experience. Wonderful. See, when you have all three, now you have an extraordinary, there's an alignment and people will know, just like you know, you know when you're speaking to someone who's aligned, who's, who's been there, who does it, who practices it, can teach it, and who's, who's, it's his soul's or her soul's mission to do it. They're congruent, right? fully. They are congruent. Yeah. And, and they can just, they can say anything, you know, and, and you'll be like, yeah, oh yeah, you know, I, yeah. yeah. And then when someone isn't aligned, you know, that's where the, that's where the, um, the, uh, that, that concept that we have when you, when you don't, you feel like an imposter, the imposter syndrome, right? So right. let's say you're, and this is by the way, I've been there. Everything I'm, everything I'm talking about is because I'm, I've been there myself. It's not because I'm some exception. And it's not like I have it all figured out either. You know, my train is just a little further down the tracks. You know, I'm still working on my soul's mission too, right. but I, 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 I'm, this is my, it's my soul's mission to create this and give this to people. Love it. So, um, you know, the, the imposter syndrome gets solved when you do what you say you're, you're doing, you, you do what you, you, you know, I think Marion Williams says my life works a lot better when I practice what I preach. Right. Um, right. Number one, and you can test it, take the time to test whether your theories are correct with other people, you know, listen, observe, like you do grow. So get feedback, you know, improve and see, don't, don't jump to conclusions and so assume that, you know, just because it's a great, you think it's a great idea, or great service that it's it's automatically going to translate where other people are going to do the same thing. Test it, okay? And there are ways to do that. And and then thirdly, take the time to connect. Right here, it's mm -hmm. as simple as this. Just yes. put your hand. Just start putting your hand on, on on your heart. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath every morning or before you go to bed at night. Thirty minutes before you go to bed. Hmm. Put your hand on your heart. Close your eyes. Who am I being called to be? That matters to me. What am I being called to do? Hmm. That matters to me. You know. What am I being called to create? 
that is an expression of my soul's mission, of who I'm here to be and what I'm here to do in this lifetime as a soul. And you will get answers. Keep Very a little simple. notebook next to you. You wake up, watch how much stuff comes to you. Do that yep. again and again and again. Today. Very simple, really simple strategy. And I'd also add, remove any distractions that are around you that prevent you from doing any of those things. Have a journal, keep things very simple too as well to make it happen. So very simple, super clear, my friend. Excellent. So I'm sure people are excited to hear more about your program, Growing Beyond Belief. And I know you mentioned in July, you're the next beta. How do people contact you? So what's your email address? Sure. So my email address is JL, Jean-Louis, so just JL at growingbeyondbelief.com. Now, it's, uh, that's my email address, best way to contact me. Uh, I also have a LinkedIn profile under my name. Uh, my name will be listed here. Uh, I do not have my website up yet, okay? And the reason being is because I'm in test mode. I'm in beta mode. I've gone through this, my testing with about two dozen people so far. Um, I'm very happy with the results that ha people have been reporting, uh, that they've been receiving. Um, and, and I can send anyone um, you know, some excerpts and, and things that people who have been through my two previous beta programs um, uh, they're, they're month long, the 30 day beta programs, uh, what they've said about their own experience. I can share that with anyone who would like to email and reach out to me to learn more. And I'm, I'm setting aside, uh, the week of the seventh to, to schedule conversations with people. And then I'm going to be starting my beta the week of the 13th. So it'll be 30 days starting at the 13th of July, uh, 2020 here. Yeah. And, um, and so, uh, yeah, people can be more than happy, I'd be more than happy to answer questions and, uh, just see if what it is that that's resonating with you. If you're hearing this and there's something that's resonating with you that, that maybe that you can tell it's like, you know, Hey, there's something calling, like maybe have a conversation. Then I'd be more than happy to, to, just to find, to learn more about what that is and to see what I, if what I offer is a match for what it is that you're looking for. If it is, I can make a recommendation. If it's not, maybe I can point you in some other direction that might be, that might serve you. Um, to the best of, of, of what's, a, what's available. So Excellent. So John Louis, I call him JL. He's very accessible. He's amazing. And in his role of facilitating greatness, facilitating greatness, that's how I see the work you do here. Um, it, it's, it's, it's extraordinary. And you've taken your work. I mean, it's 17 until where you are right now, 45. Um, tens of thousands of hours, really commitment, leadership development, um, really being the best version of yourself, applying it every day into your world, into your life, into your family. It's really extraordinary. I mean, I've grown personally in our friendship and in our co-mentorship over the years. Um, he is accessible. He's available. So JL at growingbeyondbelief.com. Reach out to him. And as he continues to build his brand, and I invite everyone everyone watching this, if you want support, if you're going through some tough times, reach out to him. He'll, he'll show you how to tap into your, your guidance system so you can get to where you want to be uh, with more clarity, freedom, and uh, peace of mind. That's as much it's been my experience personally. So everyone else watching us, if you go to successcircles.com forward slash blog, or if you go to rulesforsuccess.com, access this uh, interview, it'll be mind mapped too. My team will mind map it, kind of summarizing the key points, uh, virtues, values, lessons, questions that John Louis has, has put together. So tap into that. Anything else you want to offer our audience or say to our audience, uh, JL, John Louis, as we close out? Yeah. I'm up to the elevation of human consciousness on this planet. That's what moves me. That's my soul's mission. And um, I, just, I just appreciate the opportunity to be here with you, Joseph. I think um, what moves me is every single person um, that you is watching this because there's not a single exception. Every single one of you is great. And I'm, if I can help facilitate moving towards you moving towards the realization and us moving towards the realization of your soul's mission, what that unique expression is for you that you are here to do and who you, who you, you were here to be, then what would that look like 20 years from now if just 1% of the global population were to do that and, and, and not relying on anything else but their own guidance that's part of them, that's simply an aspect of themselves to create a new world. That's what's worthy of my life. And thank you for allowing me to be part of that and for just being able to uh, allow me to express that here on this, on this program and, um, you know, in any, and in a future, you know, interactions we may have. So thank Beautiful. you. I love it, my friend. Great. And I'm always inspired. You're living your mission. You always have been. And uh, you're just so, so much, so much more clear now. 
on this journey with this brand. And um, I really invite everyone out there who's watching this, who's gotten value from these questions, this, uh, this way of looking at things, really tapping at your heart and mind to, um, you know, to really access uh, JL John Louis and, um, and to uh, reach out to him about this program and more. So once again, rulesforsuccess.com for our audience watching this. And we appreciate everyone watching this on Facebook uh, currently. And uh, please let me know. Please let us know if you have any, any, any more questions or if you have uh, other people you want us to bring, bring, bring on board for our, our podcast as well. Thanks so much. Excellent. Thank you.